Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Gabby uh, and I'm uh, the North Clackamas Community Coordinator for the Home Gardens Program. And today we're gonna be talking about fall and winter gardening tips. Um, so we're basically gonna go over um, cover crops, different methods of building a cold frame uh, for winter veggies and the importance of mulch today. Um, so by now, uh, you know, you've been cutting down your tomatoes and corn um, and composting all of that. Um, so you're probably, you might be still harvesting some kale or some greens. Um, but your, your garden might look a little sparse at the moment. So that's kind of where cover crops come in. Um, and so these are basically crops that overwinter and they are gonna add to your soil, um, but they aren't necessarily something that you'll harvest and eat, um, although you can harvest and eat uh, fava beans. So let's see, let's get into that. So cover crops, um, these are a couple different varieties, crimson and clover on the bottom right there. Um, and then you have oilseed radish, which is another good one, and fava beans, um, which is at the top right corner. Um, uh, these are all, these basically help us help our soil. Um, they help retain water, they add nutrients to the soil um, over the long winter. Um, and, all, and fava beans up at the right, in the right hand corner, those um, are going to help build nitrogen in the soil, which is really important. And you can also harvest the fava beans and make, um, make a puree or make a dip. Um, so a cover crop is basically you're planting it in right now or a little earlier in the fall. Um, you can still get away with planting it now. Um, and it's going to be a quick growing crop. So it's primarily just to cover the soil. Um, and it's just for that short period of time over winter. And then in the spring, you're gonna um, basically compost it into your soil. So you just kind of, you can kind of uh, turn it over in the soil and then all those nutrients will be really, really good for your screen, screen or spring uh, planting. Um, so they call this like a green manure in a way. Um, so with cover crops also there's large amounts of organic matter that are added to the soil. Um, and organic matter basically just improves the texture of the soil. And I know Edith, you have really clay, uh, clay soil, um, which is kind of hard. So um, one thing that I think could be good for you right now is laying over maybe a compost um, layer on your soil right now, and then maybe planting in some cover crop um, seeds, which I have some crimson and clover, the one on the bottom right. I have some of that for you if, if you haven't planted anything yet. So that could be something that would be good for your garden specifically. Um, so cover crops also are just like really, really good for pollinators. Um, so they're gonna help your garden keep thriving. Um, the, the, especially the flowering crops, like the ones you see in, in these images. Um, so they're going to attract a lot of beneficial insects and uh, they'll help with pollination and insect control for the pests that you don't want in your garden. Um, so they're also like a, just a really good source for nectar for the pollinators. So cover crops are really just like a great, great, great thing to plant over winter, um, starting in the fall all the way into spring. Um, and let me know if you have any questions and I'll, I'll pause and I can answer them. As well. Okay, so um, right now uh, I had to buy uh, the compost okay. you know, on the top uh, of the clay, right? Mm -hmm. So and then uh, grow uh, the garlic. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Did you plant the garlic already? Uh, not yet. No, but, yeah. um, the thing is, I don't know why my garlic and last time I have it is very small. Mm, so, the little cloves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You know, there's different sizes of garlic. Um, some of mine that I planted are pretty small. Um, and that's that's totally fine. They are, they'll, they'll come in all different sizes. Mm, okay. Um, so, so cover crops, I just can't stress the importance of those. 
Um, also, this is just a really good time to be planting flower bulbs um, for the spring. So if you are interested in irises or lilies or daffodils or tulips, right now is a perfect time to get those bulbs into the ground. And then come spring, it's always kind of nice because um, they'll be blooming for us. Um, and I think another thing to mention, well, so cover crops, like I was saying with your soil, because it has such, so much clay, it, uh, one cover crops like, like the fava beans in this picture, those are really good at breaking up clay and, um, and hard soils and, and giving more air space to, to your soil. So, um, you could still put in some fava beans right now. Um, and I think what would be good is, uh, we, when we talk about the cold frames in the next slide, you could, if you wanted to build one of those, it might, it'll help your beans germinate and kind of give them a, a head start um, for, uh, for the winter. Um, let's see. So I think we went over most of the cover crops. Um, yeah, I think, have you planted any, any cover crops yet? No, not yet. Okay. So you mean, I just are thinking about just something in my mind, it's just a gallet, so. Yeah, that's great. Nope, I'm, I, right now would be perfect for garlic. Um, and I'll drop off some clover seed to you and um, you can just sprinkle that across your- Oh, so bed. we don't need the, the, the clover, uh, garlic, right? Um, well, yeah, the garlic is, um, you can use your gar garlic cloves and you want those maybe spread out a little bit, uh -huh. you know, um, but with the clover on the right, bottom right hand side, the red, with the red flowers, that you can, they'll, they come in really small seeds and you can just kind of um, spread it around on your bed and, and turn it in with the compost. And, and I think if you, if we do the next step, which is the cold frame, um, it might give it a, a better chance of, of growing in this colder season right now, but, um, but you should be able to, I think it'll still germinate because it hasn't really gotten too cold yet. Um, yeah. But today I had to, uh, go and buy, um, uh, the, uh, compost. Okay. First. And we yeah. put the, uh, uh yeah, cold crop later, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great, great, great idea. Um, and we'll talk about other types of mulch too. Um, but I think because your soil is so heavy with clay, the compost is going to be really, really helpful. Um, so like for me, like I still have bok choy growing and I have some lettuce and some radishes. And so if I wanted to keep that growing over winter, um, I would basically be getting into um, our next slide, which is Kind of different methods of building a cold frame or a they call it a cloche sometimes cloche um so basically you can overwinter a lot of crops um kale turnips arugula greens broccoli um but mo some of the times they um specifically will say cold hardy or um you know uh cool weather crops so you want to make sure that it says that on the package um but uh, basically, with a little oh, protection. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Where do you, where we get the the cold frame? Amazon so, or uh, or any store? Well, I'll go through. You can um, order it online, but there also are really affordable ways of building them. And so I'll kind of go through some of some images, and and you can really make it out of a few materials. Um, um, and you, yeah, there are things you can definitely buy online and I can, I can try to source something um, that's affordable, but also I'll show you some different methods because um, really all you're trying to do is protect um, the vegetables from, from the cold weather, the wind um, and rain, and you want to still let the sunlight in. So, um, Great question. Um, basically, these cold frames also help deter um, insects as well. Um, 
and they also um yeah they're gonna just extend your your gardening season so these are some options this is kind of what i wanted to show you so on the left hand side this is like a, a i mean these are called row covers or cloches or um or cold frames but essentially you're just wanting to cover your your vegetables so you can see there's kind of a variety of different methods here um you can use old windows or the person on the right used hay bales and then kind of built a frame but um the next slide i'll show you is the one that i'm i'm going to make at my house and i think it's um that one is fairly simple um you can see on the bottom left that one kind of that one might be a kit or something that comes um that you can assemble um but basically you just want light to come in um and the heat for the heat to collect and that's going to help your your plants grow through the winter you're basically just kind of insulating your plants um also, just to note, you don't really want to fertilize any plants that you have in the winter or fall. Um, if, uh, if, it, if they get too much nitrogen, they're going to get too much growth, and um, it makes them a little bit more susceptible to freezing. Um, here's some other examples. Um, the one on the top, uh, this, this top one in the center, um, you know, that just has plastic sheeting. Um, it looks like, you know, just some thin wood pieces that are probably nailed together. Um, and so you're just kind of protecting. I mean, even the ones on the bottom, um, these are just old windows that you can kind of, you know, cover your plants with. Wow, on window. So I yeah. can ask somebody uh, get away, but I know what is for you know <laughs> <laughs> totally but this is a wow yeah so you can Classic. use yeah you don't I, I think for this um testing things out and experimenting is really really great um especially if it's your first season kind of growing some winter vegetables then um you know before you invest in um in anything it's it might be kind of nice to to you know see what's around and use what you can I, I really like the one example on the right here because that's just using old windows and some hay bales and then you can see there is some wood that's cut but um but i think there's that method of just kind of building up a slanted um slanted cover um is really helpful also you you really want to make sure that these um windows are fade oh, the window where the light's coming through is facing south uh, just because in the winter we get a lot less sunlight so we want to capture all that sunlight as much as we can um and as you can see there's just no standard size for a cold frame it's really just whatever amount of space you have and whatever crops you want to make um yeah, and let me know if you have any questions we can stop. Um, yeah, I think you can go on. Okay. I got it. Great. Um, this is the one that I'm going to be building um, at my house. So um, this is just kind of a list of all the materials materials you'll need. Um, and as you can see, you know, these little clamps, you're just clamping these into your garden box. Um, if you don't have the garden box, you can use um, a piece of rebar or metal and stick the tubing um, kind of um, right over that. Um, but you know he's just bending them over with these clamps, and um, and then he's going to cover the entire box with the plastic sheeting. Mm. And and this kind of. Um, kind of takes us on to talking about mulch, like I mentioned earlier. So mulch is one of the more important things that we can do over the winter just to keep our soil really healthy. Um, it, it helps you retain water. 
um, just like a cover crop. Um, you know, it's a little bit different because you're, you're basically just adding, adding a material to the top of your soil. Um, uh, with a cover crop, you know, that's doing all the work that mulch is kind of doing, but it's also growing nutrients and you're going to turn that in in the spring. But with mulch, um, I have a question. I yeah. Have a question. Yeah. Um, so uh, if we cover with the crop, we uh -huh. don't need much, right? I'll say that again. If we cover with the uh, 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 cover uh, crop. Yeah. Right. So we don't yeah. need the much, right? No. No, yeah, either one. cover. Yeah, I, I would say either one. The cover crop is going to usually probably take up your whole bed and just keep growing like the clover. Um, if you're planning on if you're planning on leaving, well, yeah, it, if you have any bare soil, basically in any of your garden bed, you want to mulch. You want to put at least six to 12 inches of either, starting from the left in these images, we have compost, grass clippings, um, wood chips, and then on the right, leaves. So if you have a, a source for, um, for any of these um, materials, then you definitely want to cover about six to 12 inches. And I think because we're starting your cover crop a little bit late, I would probably say, um, you know, plant your cover crop, put that compost on, and then maybe put a thin amount of leaves on top, just so it, it's going to retain heat, it's going to build the nutrients, um, it's going to retain water. Um, so I think, I think that might be good for your bed specifically. It also helps reduce soil compaction, which is really, um, which is really bad for the garden bed. Um, it maintains soil temperatures um, by creating a barrier from the heat and the cold as well. It also helps increase soil nutrition. And as it decomposes by improving soil structure, it helps build better drainage and uh, nutrients. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. So uh, in the winter, if we cover with the mulch, so yeah. in the spring, we had to take the mulch out, right? It's actually going to decompose. And so you don't have to take it out at all. What you do is just kind of part it, you know, a little bit. The leaves will decompose. The wood chips might still be there. But it, when you're planting in the spring, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch any of it. I would just move it. You know, if you're going to be planting, say some kale or some arugula, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, just move that little area, plant it, and then keep the soil covered. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got it. Um, there's all, there's also other ways you can, um, you can cover your soil that are inorganic, they call them inorganic ways, which is just like black plastic or landscape fabrics, but those don't necessarily add nutrients to your soil. So I think we kind of say, you know, adding the leaves or the compost or the grass clippings or wood chips is the best way to do that. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, these are just some other uh, quick things you can do in your um, garden right now in the fall and winter. So you want to definitely add the mulch um, in areas of your garden that are exposed um, or do your cover crops. Um, divide perennials, say if you have um, uh, different, you know, clumps, like if you had dahlias or something, um, you know, you want to take those out, divide them, um, you want to harvest all your winter squash um, um, and definitely the pumpkins. Uh, put away your tools and hoses just in case of freezing or anything like that. Um, and, and then if you do end up building um, those uh, cold frames, you just want to make sure they're um, either um, you know, secured to the garden box or or in or somehow secured in the ground just because high winds will come over, come and you know blow everything away. Um, yeah, and then bring your tools inside. Uh, let's see. And I think 
So that's kind of what we have today for fall and winter gardening tips. And then this might just be a good idea or good time to go ahead and um, answer any lingering questions you might have. Um, how is your garden doing right now? Um, the the tomato is still um, have some, um, you know, mm -hmm. um, fruit. Okay. And, yeah. And uh, the thing is that uh, my tomato is so tall, so I don't know, you know, yeah. <laughs> I had to cut it down and do, you know, yeah. the uh, garden protection or maybe yes. gonna die themselves. Yeah, great, great um, point there, Edith. So your tomato is basically on its way out. Even if it has some fruit, I would pick that fruit and let it, let it ripen on the, on the counter. And then I would cut the tomato at the base, but don't take out the root because that root is going to provide more nutrients and air and, um, um, and space underground. So leave that in the ground, but just cut right at the base, take it out, and then, um, and then either put the compost or the mulch, mulch down right over it. Yeah. And then the, the root will die, right? Yeah, the root will die, but it becomes... Um, it becomes a really good um, place for, there's more aeration in the soil. It won't compact because the roots will decompose, but there'll still be all these little pathways basically and more microbial life will, will flourish. Um, so it's really, really good for your soil if you just, if you keep the, the roots in the soil, but, and you can just keep planting on top of it. Oh, okay. I don't need to take it out uh, in the spring. No, no, yeah. Um, I just basically keep planting on top of all of those, unless one of the roots is really, really hard and it's right in the way where you want to plant something and and it's not decomposing. Um, you know, sometimes the roots will get super, super big, and you know, sometimes you have to you have to take them out. But for the most part, I try to leave everything in the soil. Yeah. 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 Um, um, I think I'm trying to think of, yeah, with your garden, um, I think you have pretty, you have a four by eight, two, four by eight beds. Um, so it seems like the, the top left one, you know, the, these row covers might be, might be a good option for you. Um, but also you, you don't even have to get the PVC, the plastic sheeting. Um, you could also just get plastic sheeting and put some, some stakes in the ground and just kind of drape it over and maybe um, find a way to secure, secure it on both sides. Um, that might be helpful if you wanna keep growing some of your, um, your either your lettuces or kale um, through the winter. Yeah, I don't know how to get the plastic uh yeah yeah because uh, i can use the 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 uh, gadget bag but I, i'm not sure because maybe winter is um, you know the, the the wing will you know it mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah make a, uh, it's a broken yeah how we get the 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 plastic big plastic where is it yeah it's at um really any local hardware store they kind of sell them sometimes in the paint supply section so um, they're kind of like almost like drop cloths, paint, uh, clear plastic. I think, you know, sometimes they're sold in that section, but they come in um, really, really large, uh, you know, square feet, square footage. So it could be like 12 foot by 20 that you get this big, you know, plastic um, sheet um, that's just folded up. Um, so so yeah, though it's it's probably it's under ten dollars I think um, for that, and then um, and then if you yeah I mean I also at other garden stores or bigger suppliers they might also have something like this where they have the hoops already made and um, and you just stick it in the ground, but um, but yeah definitely up to you too. Um, I don't know if you also saw last year, we did a workshop with uh, milk jugs um, for seed starting over the winter. 
I think I did make the time. Yeah. I can send that to you. If we basically, um, you could see, start your seeds outside um, in the middle of winter. And uh, you just use old gallon milk jugs and you plant seeds in it. Um, you cut it in half, open it up, put soil, plant the seeds, close it, um, leave the cap off so some water can get in. And then you leave it outside for um, a couple of months. And in the spring, um, you'll already have, you'll have uh, kind of hardened off uh, little seed starts for your garden. Um, so that's also so sort of a fun thing to do. Yeah, I can share with you too. Yeah. I have another question. So about, you know, I have a zucchini, right? So yeah. zucchini right now is not grow well. Yeah. So I should cut now, right? Cut, yeah, um, yeah and leave the, 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 the root um, over there. Yeah, um, sometimes, so that's a good, that's a really good question because for me, my zucchini was so big. The root was so, so big that I, I did end up taking that root out because I wanted to plant some more things where it was. Oh, okay. So you could leave it in. Um, you could leave the root in, but definitely cut the plant off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because by now you won't be getting any more zucchini and um, and it probably has started having like some mildew maybe or some things on its leaves. Yeah. Can you send me um, the, 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 the video how to um, make the combos yeah because I set up you remember oh, you yes. gave me the bean yes. so I set up the bean already so perfect oh great or, um you know both something yeah I will send that uh right when we're done with this call that's perfect is it um were you able to set it up outside near your yeah I set it up outside okay. perfect okay and do you have a lot of trees around that drop their leaves in your yard? Uh, yeah, put it there, right? Put yeah. There. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'll, you'll be using those leaves for sure in your compost bin, but also any of those leaves are just perfect for your mulch on your garden bed. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Put on the top of my garden bed. You yep. Mean. Yeah. Oh, and you want okay. like six to 12 inches. So um, yeah, you'll want a hefty amount you could put probably you know as many leaves as you can on top of your garden but okay yeah that's good yeah. I, I don't yeah. know those leaves so far i know in a in front of the house yeah yeah oh perfect yeah i thought i thought i remembered yeah you had some uh some yeah leaves. today is good day sunshine day i know i also was planning on um on getting outside and doing some doing some mulching myself. I have wood chips, so I'll be moving the wood chips today and, and covering the soil. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, is there anything anything else? Any other questions you have? Um, no, I asked many questions already. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you so much. I feel like... Um, uh, so happy that, that you logged on and I hope that all this information is, is uh, helpful for our other gardeners. Yeah, well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much thank for your time. Yeah, thank you. And I'll send you the, uh, the compost link and everything uh, after this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, right. bye. Take care, Edith. Bye. Bye.